This is Tim from Content Stack, and in this video, I will show you the simplest way to connect Content Stack to your next 14 app and use personalization. And so, for extra sugar, I've also added in live preview, so you have the whole thing. I kind of assume that you understand the glossary of personalization at Content Stack. And so if you look at my screen here, I'm here at the Academy course for personalization. So it's like, you know, what are experiences, what are attributes, what are audiences, those kind of things. And so generally Content Stack's personalization is rule-based. Therefore, you put something into the front end to the API and it gets you back the variant of personalization that you want, like the variant of content. Um, you don't really have to do the course right now. You can still watch this video and be like oh that's cool but then i would urge you to actually do go there and learn so if we look at my stacks here right as you can see on the left side here now there's a personalization icon and so i've created a personalization project that is then connected to my personal like my project stack here that does some personalization and so let's just go over the setup that I have. And then based on that, I'll show you the website and then we dive into the code. All right, so um, personalization in Content Stack has experiences. So you can do different ones. Like if I do a new one, you can do like a segmented, like you are this type of person or you click this button so you'll see this content or A-B test where we can serve you different things. And then when people click on stuff, we send events to you know, personalization, it's either events or conversions, if people actually like fill out a form or whatever, and then you can choose which version wins and that's what you'll show. So I will not do an A-B test right now, we'll keep it more simple. So we're starting with normal segmented personalization. So my experience here is, are you a marketer or a developer when you come onto my website? And so, oh, you can see there's already some analytics because I've been, you know, trying this stuff out. And so, as you can see the configuration, I have three different variants here in my experience. And so you're either a marketer or a developer or both. We have some unicorns here. And so you can see that this, the ID zero for marketer is actually a marketer audience. So what are audiences? Well, let's go here. These are my audiences, right? So you're a marketing developer or a marketer or a developer. So let's go to marketer here. And so for example here, I've set marketer and you are one, you fit in this audience if there's an attribute that you love personalization set to true. We'll talk about attributes in a second. For developers is probably doesn't read documentation but only looks at like code samples is true. Or, and this is the interesting one, if a query parameter for persona as unicorn is set, then you fall into the marketing developer. And actually there's a bunch of different ones that we give you out of the box. And so those are attributes based, you know, you, you have these attributes and because of those you fit somewhere in an audience. So your operating system could be Windows or your country could be France, or you can have a few custom ones. So let's go and talk about these custom attributes. Right, so I just created a marketer key loves personalization and kind of that's it, right? So you kind of say, this is now an attribute that I can use elsewhere. And so this loves personalization is actually used here. If loves personalization is true, then you match the marketer audience. All right, this is my base. I also have set up a few, like when you click on a button, there's an event being sent. This you can later on use for A-B test, but we don't go in that too deep right now. So let's go to my stack. So in my stack here, um, if you go to the settings, there's now a variance tab. And feel free to ignore the A-B test here because I've been fiddling around and you see it's unlinked. So this is not even linked to the personalized project because the interesting thing here is you don't have to have personalized to do variants, different variants of content in Content Stack. You can have your own personalization engine and link that to showing different variants. That's a bit too far for this video, but let, let's have a look at my marketing developer that's actually connected to personalize, right? And so you have these different variants in here. So you're both you marketing developer, you're a marketer or a developer, and it's linked to my page type. So I have a content type for pages, very simple. So when we now go to this page here, you can see there's now a new drop down here for entries. And then you have different variants you can select, right? This is my marketer or developer experience that we have selected in 
personalize. And then you can say, well, let's have a look at the marketer version, right? And now you can see the title is different. So it has actually, it's like a variant field. And so you always get the base and then you over, over, overwrite something specifically for that field. And you actually have some personalization going on here in live preview. And you can see, um, for example, if I now go to my developer, you see there's some different overrides here. I look at this one and there it goes. So it loads the base one. It looks at where my entry is and then it just adds that in the live preview. And you see, hey, this is my developer page. And so here you can just edit your different variants, hit publish. And like you can see, if I do the base one and I hit publish, you can actually select which variants you want to publish as well. All right, so now with that out of the way, let's have a look at the website. So let me just hard refresh it for you and zoom it in a little bit. All right, so I added a bunch of debug information here for you, for you know the developers amongst us. You can see this is my base variant and I also have like these little edit buttons because um, live preview and editing, everything is turned on. So let's first do this query parameter because that's the easiest one, right? So when I do, oh, Persona equals unicorn. So you see it directly personalized, which means what we do is based on this query string, we send um, this in a header to the system. And so content stack returns to you, you know, this variant of this entry. And that happens server side. And that's why this is so fast. And so basically this is, Personalize, this is just the, the, the prefix. Zero is experience zero, which is, I'll show you quickly. I know there's a bunch of talking here because I have to take you through this stuff. So, um, oh yeah, we have to be here. So you see experience short ID zero, and then here it says two. So when we go in here, you'll see two, which is both, which is marketing developer, which is the unicorn. So this is basically what it's sending to our API and returning. And so you can see how we send that actually. And we look at the network and we go with our entry fetch and we go to the headers and scroll all the way down. You'll see here, this is what it's sending for what it wants to get back as a variant. And so that's when you see this. So now when I said, like now we did it with the query parameter, right? But you can also set an attribute in code. So when I hit marketer here, it's setting the marketer personalization. And you see now that it goes to experience zero um, and then variant zero, which is zero for marketer. And that is of course a similar thing. And so when I set it for developer, you see now it says ID four which is four. The fact that this has now a four as an ID is just because I've been adding a few and diff like different ones here. Like you can actually make a draft again, edit this and add variants and then the IDs will just keep going up. And so now it's showing you that one. And I can also reset all of them and then we're back here. And so um, a bunch of different things are flying about because I just showed you that we actually have some analytics. Um, the thing is, it only sends one analytics call per day per person. So it's a real count. So these are not like um, I went to this experience 66 times. No, it's just, oh, I just clicked developer first. So that's what you're seeing now. If you now go to this site and then go as a marketer, I'll see different stuff here. All right. So let's go and have a look at some of this code, shall we? Because it's, you know what? It's not that crazy. So this is just a normal next 14 out of the box project um, and let's go um, so to get started with personalization we need a middleware and so what this thing is doing a middleware runs every time you you know load the page and so what we do every time you load the page and, and so when it's not any of these things it will actually grab your project uid for your personalization project and it gets the API URL for your region. So in my case, it's Europe, right? So I have EU personalized edge content stack. And so you basically set your URL and it initializes personalize. And you see, it grabs the request because a middleware sits in between. You, you go for a request, then it goes to the middleware and then you, you know, go to the response. And so we sit in the request and we do a few things. So from that request, it grabs what it needs 
it finds the specific variant parameters, which is this one, right? Right now it's experience zero, but no personalization. When I click this, it's experience zero with the first personalization variant. That's what this thing gets. And then what it does in this case, it's parsing that URL and sets a query parameter for that variant param. So essentially it just adds some sort of personalization for variable here with this attached. And that will actually then be used to query content stack. And we do it this way because then this URL gets cached. So it's super, super fast on the CDN. And after that, we actually rewrite it back to not have that short param again. So we don't see that in the front end. And so this is like a little trick for super fast caching and um, to keep state for each page load of what that variant is. And then what it does is it adds the personalization state to the response. This is a very simple function that literally just adds two cookies. And we can have a look at those if you want. We can go to application cookies. And so first it's your unique user ID of me as a visitor here. And then it has this, right? It shows, okay, what is active right now? Well, it's experience zero, variant zero. And then, so the experience is the first one and then the active, you know, one that's zero. So when I go to marketer now, oh, that's the zero one already. Let's do developer. And then we look at these cookies. You see, it's number four. So it stores this. And so every time it sets this, so, you know, browsers and front-end SDKs and whatever can do stuff with this and show you different things. All right, so that's the base. So then I have my content stack file in my lib. Here I create my stack. You should know this if you've watched this before, this kind of things. Then I'm initializing my live preview. That's also not really for this, pro for this video. But then here I add a few things. So I'm actually creating a context. And in a production project. This won't just be living here. You make a lovely file and you do everything right. I just wanted to have like one file to do all the magic for you so you can see it. That's what this simple project is about. So I'm initializing personalization. I'm creating a React context, which means if you grab the personalized context now, it's basically um, set up once and you you don't, you don't have to touch it again. You can just import the create context. You get the instance of personalizing. You can do a bunch of functions. And then when I get my page, when I query it, if there's this variant parameter, I'm doing something to that. This variant alias makes it from this to this. And that is then sent to my query, to the content stack SDK as give me this variant, please. And that's all there is to it. So when we go to our page, without looking at all the extra stuff, um, you know, here's just the get page to get your page and it sets it. There's this little extra thing that it needs from the URL next to get my variant param, which is this one, right? And so it just grabs the search parameters and grabs which one that is. And now it's saved, right? And that we can send to the get page and it returns the right variant. If you don't send this, it just doesn't send you a variant. It's just a base variant. And here is my personalized instax in instance with the use context because there's a few extra things we can actually be doing here right use effect which like when the page renders on page ready we do some stuff so this is for um, visual editing don't look at that now but we're actually sending an impression because we want to get information in personalization dashboard about what are we looking at right now and so this zero here is again the same as this zero which is basically my um experience, right? And so the fact that this experience is triggered, it now can, you know, do some analytics, which is what we were looking at here before, which currently is not much, but if this runs for longer, it will. Um, and so that's like the basic thing here because, because of the query string parameter. And so basically this thing that's sent in the headers, it can show the right stuff. So when it's developer, it shows you this one. When it's marketer, it shows you marketers. When it's nothing, it shows you nothing. And this is just the change of header that goes to the API. And so there is extra stuff because you see me click these buttons, right? So what we can do is we can set these attributes and then just reload the page. And if it's custom attributes, it will always remember that you clicked on those. So uh, when I click marketer now and I just go back to the page, it is still marketer because it remembered this. 
And that's because it's a custom attribute that we send. And so I just made one little button, if you look at the page here, for the type marketer, right? So for marketer, um, I'm getting my personalized context again, so I can do some stuff based on personalization. So if it's marketer, my attribute will be marketer is true, developer is false. And those attributes live here, right? So this is my uh, attribute. Uh, marketer is true, developer is false. That's what we're looking at here. And you see also see an event main. Let's, let's look at that in a second. And so here we actually say personalize set and the personalization attributes for marketer, right? So we have, if we look at marketer, it's sending marketer true, developer false in this set. And after that, we also trigger an event. And that event in this case is the I click the marketer button. Right now, I'm not doing anything with these events. But if you have an A-B test and you're sending these events based on that, you can actually look at, oh, this one is more popular. Let me just say this one is winning. This is not for this video. And after that, I just literally refresh the page because this is a very simple demo. Of course, you don't do this normally. Um, but that's kind of it. So when I now hit marketer, it will just refresh as marketer because we set this attribute. And I can actually show you probably when I say, let's see if I can do preserve the log, we refresh, clean everything out. Let's say we go to developer now. So you can see a few things that happened before it refreshes the page, right? So you can see user attributes. And so when we look at the payload here, it actually says developer true, marketer false. And then there's also, I think there's an event uh, I think we should have this one. And so I'm also sending this CTA developer event. And that's what we saw here, trigger event. Because I clicked on developer, right? So it's sending that event. And so when we have a look here at my events, it's sending the CTA developer event. So right now we don't have an IB test, so it doesn't do much. But it's that's basically how easy this stuff is, right? It, it, it kind of feels like if you implement Google Analytics, you're sending stuff as well, right? So when I click a button, I'm setting an attribute or I'm triggering an event or stuff like that. And so um, there you have it. You can see this is clearly a super simple project. But with this in mind, you can do a bunch of really cool things. And it's rule-based right now. And so it's quite different than I'm personally used to because I've worked at other companies that build personalization before. Um, but because of that, it's so simple because it's all server-side. You send something into it and it shows you back a version, a version of whatever page you have. And that makes it simple for developers because I literally just implemented this in a few lines. It's not too crazy. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you want to learn more or talk to me directly or have some feedback, whatever, join our Discord. Link is in the description of this video and um, speak to you soon. Cheers.